السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا خيرة الله وابن خيرته السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وابن سيد الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to episode number 30 of Reflections on Ziyarat Ashura brought to you by Mizan Institute. Allahumma laka alhamdu hamda shakirina laka ala musabihim. Alhamdulillahi ala azimi raziyati. Allahumma rzuqni shafa'at al-Husayn yawm al-wurud. Wa thabbit li qadam sidqin indaka ma'a al-Husayn wa ashab al-Husayn. This last part of Ziyarat Ashura is the part where you recite it while you are in sajda. And so for a person to be able to do that, they'll have to have memorized these couple lines. It's not too hard and I would encourage the brothers and sisters to at least memorize this. I know uh, people. some people have memorized all of Ziyarat Ashura actually. Uh, I remember back when we were growing up in our hausa, there was a time where, you know, it was a thing that people would get together and they would memorize. This is the, the entire ziyara. So these two lines at least are something to memorize so you can say them in sajda whenever you're reciting ziyarat ashura and you won't have to listen uh, to someone else recite them for you and you repeat. Allahumma <laughs> lakal hamd, hamd al shakirin. O Allah, praise to you, hamd to you. What type of hamd though? There are different types of hamd. Sometimes you say Alhamdulillah. What you mean by that is all praise is due to Allah. All beauty belongs to Allah, etc. Like in Surah Fatiha. When we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen in Surah Fatiha, what is meant is all praise is due to Allah. If there's anything out there that is praiseworthy, eventually that praise will belong to Allah because He's the creator of that thing. There's another definition or usage of hamd as well. And that is shukr. Gratitude and gratefulness. It means thank you. Sometimes when we say Alhamdulillah, like we find out something good has happened, we learn of a blessing that has come our way. We say Alhamdulillah. That means what? That means all thanks is due to Allah because of this blessing. And lots of times, you know, people when they hear the word Alhamdulillah, this second usage is what comes to their mind. Although the, I would say, primary definition and usage of Alhamd is praise. But yes, it is also used for shukr and gratitude. Now here in the ziyara, it says, Allahumma lakal hamd. Oh Allah, hamd is for you. But which type of hamd are we talking about? Hamd al-shakirina laka ala musabihim. The hamd that here means shukr. We are grateful to you, O oh Allah, because of the tragedy that befell Hussein and awladul Hussein and ashab al Hussein alayhim was salam. We're thankful. If this ziyara is in a way letting ourselves know, letting everyone else know that we are sorrowful, we are upset, we are even angry over the tragedy that befell Imam Hussein a.s. We send la'an upon the killers of Imam Hussein and anyone who had anything to do with the death of Imam Hussein. If all of that is happening, it doesn't mean that we are complaining about this tragedy. No, no. Our faith teaches us Whatever the tragedy is, whatever the hardship is, and we all have struggles in life, brothers and sisters, we all do. If you ever feel like you've got it going tough, and I say this to myself as well, let us remind ourselves that at the end of this ziyara, for the greatest tragedy of history, which is the tragedy of Karbala, we're saying, Allahumma laka alhamd, hamd al-shakirina laka ala musabihim, that we are grateful. We're not upset about the fact that this tragedy came. We are upset about the tragedy. But the fact that this tragedy befell Imam Hussein and we are suffering from it, we are affected by it, we're not complaining either. We are grateful for it. A lot of good came out of this. Lady Zainab السلام, has been narrated to say on the day of Ashura, Allahumma taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban. Oh Allah, accept from us this sacrifice. This is something great. If we are making a sacrifice in Hajj, for example, throughout the year, we feed the poor, these are sacrifices we're making, we're asking Allah to accept it, then this is a wonderful thing actually. This is something to be grateful about. 
This was also a sacrifice. So in that sense, we are grateful, O oh Allah. We are upset. We are grievous. It does not justify what the wrongdoers did. None of that. But we're not complainers either. This was part of your plan. There was no other choice. Imam Hussein had to give his life to preserve Islam. And so some narrations also say that Lady Zainab said that مَا رَأَيْتُ إِلَّا Jamila, When she's asked by that tyrant, did you see what happened, what your Lord did to you, to, 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 your, to Hussein and to your family? What does she say? She says, مَا رَأَيْتُ إِلَّا Jamila, According to that narration, of course, that all I see is beauty. Wait a minute, what kind of beauty are we talking about here? Well, the beauty in the bigger picture and the bigger scheme, a grander scheme of things. That is what is meant here. So in the grander scheme of things, Allahumma laka alhamd, hamd al-shakirin. We are grateful to you for this when we look at the bigger picture. Alhamdulillahi, another thing to be grateful about. Ala azimi raziyati. Alhamdulillah, I'm not indifferent towards this. I'm not neutral. I am affected by this. I am moved by this. My heart is broken by this. The greatness of my sorrow is not normal. It's something huge. I'm thankful for that as well. So this is interesting, brothers and sisters. There are two things we are thankful about. Number one, the tragedy itself. And number two, the fact that we are moved by this tra tragedy and affected by this tragedy. Because there will be some people who are so cold-hearted they could care less about this. There are some who were okay with it, some who encouraged it, some who supported it, some who say it's not relevant to me anymore. But alhamdulillah, I'm none of these people. I'm one of those who till today after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, I'm still living this tragedy as if it's fresh as we discussed in previous episodes. Okay, so we are thankful, O oh Allah. Now that we're thankful, you see the Quran says when you're thankful, Allah will give you more. Okay, so we are thankful. La in shakartum la azidannakum. If you are grateful, I will give you more. Now that we're thankful, Allahumma rzuqni shafa'at al Husayni yawm al wurud. If I am one of those who is in love with Imam Hussein and is affected by his tragedy, is thankful that such a thing happened. I akramani bi ma'rifatikum wa ma'rifati awliya'ikum akrama maqamaka wa akramani bik. Honored be my honored me by knowing you, O Imam Hussein. If all of this is true and applies to me, Allahumma rzuqni. Shafa'at al Husayni Yawm al Wurud. Oh Allah, I ask you for the intercession of Imam Hussein on the day when we enter the day of judgment. That is going to be one of the hardest days for us. Allow Imam Hussein alayhi salam's shafa'a to encompass us. What more could we ask for, brothers and sisters? Now, the fact that we love Imam Hussein, the fact that we mourn Imam Hussein, it is a it is a big deal. But you know why all of this is a big deal to the point that we, inshallah, deserve the intercession of Imam Hussein? It's because what he did was big. Or else mourning for someone is no big deal. It's not that hard. To be heartbroken about a tragedy is not that hard. But what he did was so great, the greatness of that rubs off on anything that is associated with his tragedy. Let it be mourning for him, remembering him, loving him, all of that. And so because what he did was so great, O oh Allah, and he has such a high rank in your eyes, Allah, and I am acknowledging all of that, and I'm connecting myself to that and to him. Allahumma rzuqni shafa'at al Husayni yam al wurud. On that hard day, the day of judgment, where we all enter upon our Lord, enter upon the day of judgment, however you want to word it, we need his help. Let him take our hand, and inshallah he will. Inshallah he will. Imam Hussein is so great that he will take our hand on that day, inshallah ta'ala. We just need to stay steadfast on the right, right path. وَثَبِّتْ لِي قَدَمَ صِدْقٍ عِنْدَكَ مَعَ الْحُسَيْنِ We're also saying this in sajda. Oh Allah, the second thing I'm asking you is that you make steadfast my position next to you, me being with you, O oh Allah, alongside Imam Hussein and the companions of Imam Hussein alayhim salam I ask you to make me steadfast. Keep me in that position, that rank that is next to you, O oh Allah, that same rank that Imam Hussein and the Ashab of Imam Hussein are. Of course, this doesn't mean that we'll ever get anywhere close to their rank. But we're asking, Oh Allah, there is going to be a position next to you in Jannah. I want you to keep me there next to Imam Hussein and the Ashab of Imam Hussein. If I'm not one of them, I can at least cling on to them, be connected to them. So wherever they are, I'm with them. And they're going to be with you, so I be with you. And these Ashab of Imam Hussein that are so high, 
that alladhina badalu muhajahum dun al husaini alayhi salam why are they so high they gave their everything for imam hussein sometimes we give a little bit sometimes we give some of what we have sometimes we give our muhajja alladhina badalu muhajahum muhaj is the plural of muhajja which is the blood of the heart, the most important blood in the body, that which if you take it away, right away the body will die. They gave the heart, the blood of the heart, of their hearts, they gave their everything, in other words, for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And that's why they deserve to be next to him. We want to be somewhere in that vicinity, close to them, somehow connected to them, because being connected to Imam Hussein and Ashabul Hussein alayhi salam, will equal me being close to you, O Allah. And I want to be steadfast in that. Brothers and sisters, I want to end with this point. That we're always chanting Labbaika Ya Hussein. And this is something that I talk about all the time. We are in love with Imam Hussein. We want to have something to do with Imam Hussein. We say, Oh Imam Hussein, we weren't with you. We wish we were with you so that we were also felicitous on the Day of Judgment like you are. We're always saying that, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, this, you know what this entails? Just saying it, just expressing my love is great, but is not going to be enough if I want to really get way up there on that ladder of spiritual growth and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that, when I say, Labbaik Ya Hussein, when I tell Imam Hussein how much I love him, the, the, the companions of Imam Hussein gave their everything. Now, Imam Hussein is not telling me necessarily to do what they did. That was Ashura, it passed. But the least that I can do is to learn my deen properly and live up to it. The deen encompasses everything. It doesn't just encompass salat and psalm and fasting and, and, and zakat and these things. It's more than that. It's, it's controlling my anger when I need to control it with my parents, with my siblings, with whoever it is, my wife, husband, whoever it is. There are so many things that fall into that scope of religion. And so we have to be, at least if Imam Hussein is trying to preserve Islam, who is he preserving it for? He's preserving it for you and I, so that we can at least be proper Muslims in, the, in our lives. And so if we weren't there to be on the side of Imam Hussein, to give our lives in, in the way of Imam Hussein, to give our muhajja for Hussein salam, the least we can do is live a religious life, live it within the boundaries of Islam, because that is the least that Imam Hussein salam expects from us. And with that, we come to the end of this podcast series of reflections on Ziyarat Ashura. The goal and aim was to touch on the main points in this Ziyarat that we have so that the brothers and sisters in the future, when they recite this Ziyarat, they have a better understanding and a better idea of what they're reciting, who certain individuals in this Ziyarat are, what their significance was in Islamic history, some theological points, and so on and so forth. And so I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity to have this series. And I hope that he accepts from me this very humble offering. I also want to thank the brothers and sisters for tuning in. And I hope that they have benefited from this. And finally, I would also like to thank Mizan Institute and all the brothers and sisters that are involved in making all of this possible. Inshallah, the brothers and sisters out there who are benefiting from whatever content is being put out, they also show their support to Mizan Institute so that they can continue their work in putting out this premium content. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Brothers and sisters, please keep us all in your duas. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَعَلَى أَصْحَابِ الْحُسَانِ